All right, what's up, guys? Um, I was talking to uh, Adam on the Discord about uh, some of his new Sampo skip lines, um, and he was he was curious about um, you know hearing some more, getting a video about some flight number stuff, and um, I told him, man, that's probably gonna be the next video I do because uh, for the last I don't know, man, two three weeks I had been in the chats with uh berkman who has the uh chart the disc golf value chart website and we were i was talking you know like hey i you know look at that sheet all the time i know quite a bit about it you know what are you guys trying to do and you know i was tell also telling him that i was trying to come up with some kind of formula that would factor in speed uh to the stability as well um, cause you know, you look at the ratio as typically what, what you look at to try to get a feel for what the stability is. You know, you divide the fade by the turn, you come up with a, it's a fraction, but, um, you know, 0.5 is like a PD, right? Cause it has, has twice as much turn as fade. Um, you know, PDs are fairly stable. Um, but there's a lot of discs, uh, when you look at the sheet, you'll see a lot of them, um, that kind of have around that stability, but they fly very differently. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, well, it just has a lot to do with the speed probably. And, um, man, did I not have a clue what all I would figure out it would have to do with. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to throw a disclaimer out there. Um, I, I work at a gas station and I haven't taken a math class in 20 years. Um, but I have always just, been decent with numbers and uh, enjoyed understanding things and have also usually been able to figure stuff out. So um, you can take all this with a grain of salt. I'll present a lot of things as facts and I think they're very factual. Um, I'll have some things that I've had a, got a pretty strong suspicions about and I'll try to say that and then there's flat out some things that I am just guessing and I'll try to let you know that too. Uh, try to be as upfront about everything as possible. Um, but I, uh, this all kind of started, you know, I mentioned that I started back up playing. I think it was like last July I started playing again and I came back in with my, uh, these five ballistic probes, man. I didn't have a Rive uh, to my name. I remember Rives like just came out the last time I quit playing and I was thinking, man, like, man I just got my ballistic probes. I ain't going to deal with this. Um, uh, and I kind of set the game down for a while, came back last July, and I've been back, you know, solid since then. Um, but these were my five Bullets to Pros. Um, this one in particular, uh, I think Jake Forstall uh, might appreciate this one. But, uh, this thing was my baby. I love this. I love this. I love the fact that I could just nose down a little bit, wing it out there, and I've got a straight straight controllable shot. Um, I didn't have a sapphire. Sapphires weren't a thing when I quit too. So I had got the uh, Beast PD, the gray PD. Um, in fact, I didn't even have that in the back. I think I just had an extra squad musket. And um, I think it was sometime around August, you know, a month or so into, about a month or so into playing um, again, that I found that stat spreadsheet. And I think I... It was posted on, I think, the Disc Golf Valley Tips Facebook page. Um, so I was, I saw the, that list of numbers and I'm like, holy cow, dude, I love numbers. That stuff was like, it was like Christmas. Um, and I was fascinated by just how close they all were and how different everything flew. Um, and, you know, I decided, you know, hey, I'm going to start buying some discs. So I bought, I bought this glow pack because um, I noticed that this thing went a hell of a lot further than my, than my skip skip ballista pro did um and then you know i got the i got the throw in it you know pretty similar i normally do a little nose down wing it out there and like man this thing flies really straight and you know the more i threw it the more i realized that it flew pretty much flew exactly like my skip turn ballista pro um And I'm like, 
man, those are very similar flights. The other one just goes further. You know, it's got the extra glide on it, um, but they flew the exact same. And I was just like, wow, I fly the exact same. This one goes four, 550, the other one goes 600. Um, and I saw on the spreadsheet, that's when I first noticed it. Like, man, they have the exact same numbers uh, with the exception of turn. <laughs> Sorry, I should have this pulled up already. Um, this is essentially Greg's spreadsheet. I just added a whole bunch of other crap to it and made it look less pretty. Um, but if I'm looking at a uh, Velista Pro here, 2.2 drag, 3.1, 2.1, 2.1, 1.1, 0. And then uh, you know how the cloud break is right above it. So you can see these boom, 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 boom. All of the, everything is the exact same except the fade. And I'm like, wait a minute. So these two have all the same stats except the fade. And this turn plus the pro flies exactly like this. This is an extra glide turn big skip plus to pro. So I'm like, it's like adding a third at to it. And I'm like, that's, that's nuts. So I then um, went about my business and the deal of the week popped up and it was this guy right here. And lo and behold, one of my, my probably my favorite disc, um, this was the exact same as my favorite disc, except it had one break on it. Future Steve here. Um, Y'all might have noticed I took the video down. I realized after I uh, edited it last night and I thought I had everything looking good. I was watching it on my way into work today and um, realized that I stopped. Or, excuse me, I cut out the like most important part of the whole video by accident. So I came back to reshoot that and decided I'd go ahead and, and record over some of the uh, more boring parts of the video that I thought were interesting, but then listening back to it, maybe it, it would probably just be interesting to me. Um, but when you see future Steve, thank him because he probably saved about 10 minutes of your life. Um, but pretty much, um, I think right about this point, I was talking about how I found the, the cloud breaker, um, windbreak cloud breaker role. <laughs> And, you know, I essentially figured out that um, that turn takes 5% off the fade. It doesn't have anything to do with the turn. And so, you know, I, I took this information and went to a Facebook group and uh, sought out somebody who, uh, you know, seemed like they knew what they were talking about and um, ran it by him. And he pretty much shot it down saying that he knows knows all these people that work for him and that and the turn changes the turn and all these other things and so um i was kind of had my tail between my legs and i was like well i thought i was onto something um and then i stumbled upon the global league site and uh greg's pay greg's spreadsheet i uh, saw that it was five percent and i was like son of a bitch i had it right all along um so but that kind of got me excited about it all over again and um you know i wanted to i wanted to dig more into this so Back to what I'm doing with Bark, I uh, want to come up with this formula that would factor in speed with the stability because, you know, we just got this fade turn. Um, so I pretty much, you know, I, I detailed when I recorded it the first time, you know, all my thought process and all that crap. And I don't think it's really that important, um, especially in the long run with the direction this video is going to go. Um, but pretty much I just I looked at you know, all the 0.5 discs and I, and I threw them all in the range and I superimposed where they land on top of each other and try to find patterns and, um, you know, just came to realize, you know, the speed obviously has an effect on, on how stable the disc is. Um, came up with a formula. It was, uh, this ridiculous formula and, um, you know, uh, Thought you know, thought I did a pretty good job of what I was trying to do, um, but yeah, we'll cut back. Uh, we'll cut back and see how how it progresses quite a bit. But it still didn't change much. But I did that. I put it. It's up on Berkman's site now. Um, but it, you know, it was great. It's better than what what I was using now. Um, but I realized upon doing this that I was. I was, you know, I did a decent job trying to solve the problem that I was looking at, but I wasn't looking at the right problem because um, this it doesn't, 
this doesn't, you know, this, if you look at this, it's saying that a, a destiny at 47.64 is more stable than a captain, right? And the Cloudbreaker 47.4, Destiny 47.6, Destiny more stable than a Cloudbreaker. Uh, but they're all bunched pretty tightly, um, which honestly is not that far off. But if you look at just the fade turn number 4787, all right, Cloudbreaker's a little more. Anyways, how I wrote the formula, the fade, in order to get the fade to, to factor in more. Um, these west side discs, which have just shit tons of, of turn and then a, a, a ton of fade. I don't know. The formula didn't work out right. Um, but I actually went went and tested it. I'm like, all right, Destiny. Let's throw a Destiny. Try to get the wobble right because it is very important, as I'm about to explain. But I'm like, yeah, well, dude, Destiny does kind of get pretty far left when you throw it. And then, I mean, I already knew what a, I already know what a cloud record does, right? It ends up, it ends up over there, pretty close. Right, nice straight flight, very different numbers. It's got, you know, far lower uh, turn and fade, but they end up right over here, about in the same area. So. Um, that's when I realized that I'm not, I wasn't trying to figure out the stability number means nothing. I, I essentially spent two weeks and, you know, a freaking 50 hours looking at that spreadsheet, um, messing around with the numbers. And what I accomplished was coming up with a number that pretty much tells you where this green line comes to an end. But the, re the reality of it is these three discs are, are pretty darn similar as to when they, where they end up. So that number should be close, and it was close on the sheet. So I then came to realize, um, you know, and also partially for my love for the Sampo, which uh, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I, I like this disc. Um, and in realizing why I like it, I, I feel like what I realized what what I was trying to actually figure out. Um, and it is that I came up with this predictability and this is just got off all this formula. It's not even close to being accurate. It's still up on Berkman's site because it's, I don't know, but it's, I didn't even know what to call it, man. Like I was thinking like workability, predictability, um, touchiness is what it is, man. That's how touchy is the disc. And that's ultimately what I think is the stability that I'm feeling. Uh, when I'm playing this game and why I like uh, Sampo so much. So I had muskets, sapphires in my bag, like literally, like pretty much everybody else. Um, but I wasn't, wasn't hitting my lines as well as I wanted to. Um, where's my pictures? All right, this is pretty much this is touchiness explained in a picture pretty much. So let's pretend I'm trying to throw a, a straight shot with these discs. Um, I just threw grace because it's a little bit flippier than a normal, than a normal fairway, um, my baby, and then a sapphire, right? So we want to throw the tunnel shot. Okay, so with a grace, what that looks like, it flips up, you know, kind of rides to the right a little bit, comes back, then it's just straight and you can see that would go through a pretty narrow tunnel, All right? Sapphire, it rides more to the right, has a stronger fade to get to end center because it's just it's more overstable than a grace is. Okay, so the Sampo just doesn't turn much and it doesn't fade much. So this is kind of like the Gannon Burr of lines right here, right? When you're faced with that tunnel shot, you're either going to be the guy that throws the flip up you know, hyzer flip straight shot that goes straight through the tunnel, or you're the guy like a Gannon Burr. And I don't know if you guys watch watch the pros play or not, but they made a big dang deal about it on the commentary last year about yeah, see, 
dumb, I asked them a dumb question. So um, they made a big damn deal about how Gannon makes his gaps bigger because he's throwing over stable discs and he's forcing them over and they're coming back. That's what this flight is. And you can see that the Sampo doesn't, when you, when you throw it with turn, it just it doesn't go very far right. And then it takes forever to come back left. So I can, you can throw that through a narrower tunnel. Okay. When you overturn a grace, it doesn't want to come back. It's way out there. When And I had to put a crazy amount of anti to get this right here. But it obviously doesn't go as far right. And the sapphire, about the same here. But it really had to fight back out of that. You can see how it turned way more before it straightened out. Um, also, I tried to throw it straight down the line where it didn't have any turn. You can see that the grace ends up about right here. Same spot. Sampo did, except the Sampo was like fading immediately, but it just faded really slow. This one threw that flip up and went, and you can see how hard the sapphire goes. So this is what I mean by touchiness. Um, the grace is more touchy than a sapphire, than a Sampo. So what is that quantified? The best I could come up with was some function of, you know, turn minus fade. How big is the gap? Right. When you take the ratios, yeah, it's going to end up, you know, the lines are going to end up similar to each other, but how much more turn is there than the fade? And the bigger that variance is, you know, the more touchy the disc is. Um, with some exceptions, right? Paradigm, pretty touchy, um, but it's because the fade is so low. So even though it's got a tight window, it's got the capability of getting cranked over. But if you throw a paradigm and you don't put much angle on it, you'll actually, I mean, it's very controllable, right? Just like cloud breakers, man. Cloud breakers are my favorite. I don't throw them right now because this thing just goes so much further. And I hate it every time I throw the thing and it gets away from me. I'm like, damn, I need my freaking cloud breaker back. Um, back again. But yeah, so let's get it. Um, we said a ton of time trying to illustrate this, but um, talking touchiness. Um, when we look at the sheet and looking at Sampo um, with the speed adjusted and the fade adjusted stability, um, 48.69, Sapphire 48.75. So Sampo Sapphire, pretty darn close um, in their stability. So again, like I mentioned, that just says that if fired at flat ground like this, they're going to end up pretty close to each other on the chart. Um, but to illustrate what I mean by touching this, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this up in the air and we'll just see, you know, kind of pay attention to where it goes. Obviously it gets further left. Um, it lands in a, that's like a weird skip forward, but you'll see it didn't, it didn't go hard left. Um, Sapphire. Pretty good. A similar height. Okay, it gets up and it really starts going left. So you can see that that goes quite a bit further left. Um, so you throw it up in the air and it's it's more stable. Okay, and then so Sapphire looks a lot more stable. All right, so then I'm going to throw just a low line drive here. And you can see Sampo just made it really, really, really straight. Um, and we go and we look at Sapphire. All right, this is no surprise to you guys, I'm sure, but I'm about to get to the point. Okay. It's got a lot of stability, so it starts to fight back, but you can see how it took a wider, wider path to get there. Um, so turns more when you throw it lower, even though they go about the same when you throw them flat. Um, this is kind of a, a little bit of what I was trying to trying to figure out, you know, how to put into a formula. You know, how do we how do I explain that difference? You know, even is that so one just keep calling it touchiness. All right, we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to last night, Steve. Um, he's getting ready to. Um, through the berg, and I think I think some of y'all might know where this is headed. So the berg, throw a berg. 
Everybody loves the bar. All right. What is it about right there? I'll go straight. Kind of a weird angle you have to throw. Okay, so very straight flight. There's no fade or turn on this, so you have to give it the turn. Okay, let's throw this sucker way up in the air and throw it on the exact same angle. Put a little more on it, right? That's it's supposed to fade out when you throw it. There's nothing. It's not going it's not going any more left at all. I put a little bit too much angle by accident, so it didn't go. But look, it just goes straight. So that's the exact same flight as it had whenever I threw it straight. Okay. This is my favorite. Let's see if I can get this angle right. I'm gonna throw it way freaking low. Hey, there's no extra turn on that. I'm gonna angle off a little bit, but you can throw the thing freaking six inches off the ground, and it doesn't it doesn't overturn. So when I did that, it okay. So bird is an interesting animal. Um, so that led me to the question, what, what do I, like, what do I take from this? How do you explain that a bird can be aimed up and down, not move at all, turn or fade? You know, it doesn't seem like any fades added, any turns taken away. Um, Sampo um, fades out, you know, stalls out and turns more, but just not very much. And then a sapphire, um, which isn't even an understable disc. You know, you could do that to an understable disc and it really flies. Um, a touchier disc and it will really change it. Um, so how do you explain that? And to that I say, let's go to back to this stat sheet. So essentially what's happening is the amount of fade and turn are being changed. So looking back to... But we know about how the uh, stats work. How do they do that right now? If we have an extra turn, we have an extra fade. Um, that's what we've already talked about. They change, they change the fade, and they change only the fade. Okay, and you'll notice. Okay, so this was a 0.93. It went down by 0.05. I mean, it went down by five hundredths. Berg was 0.15, it only went down by one hundredth. Man, I don't know if you can hear those kites or not, but they're they're loud tonight. Sorry. Um, so sapphire was 0.23. It's gone down by uh, six. Okay. So it's a percentage of the thing in my opinion. All right, here's where we get into speculation mode, but I think I've got some pretty good evidence here. The Berg isn't affected because it's got such a ridiculous flight number to begin with. So it doesn't matter how high I aim or how low I aim, the amount that is changing is so small that it doesn't really affect it. And the Sampo, by comparison to the Sapphire, you know, with the base, base stats, um, that's 30, so, well, I'm just saying 30, but it's 3 tenths difference. Um, so 3 tenths is 1.2. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's about 25% less fade in a sapphire. So we're, we seem to have about that much less effect when you aim up and down. Um, and here is the touchiness, right? So when you have discs that have similar fade and turn, you'll notice that it rates the sapphires. You know, if you were to go straight off this fade turn number, the sapphire is supposed to be less stable. With my stupid formula, puts them about the same, which I think the range showed us, you know, they're about the same. But when you aim the sapphire up, it's more, you know, it fades harder. When you aim it down, it turns harder. So depending on where you're aiming is what it actually plays as. Um, and that's what I meant by touchiness. So I think that when you're pointing straight ahead, you're going off these numbers here. All right, it's that line when you click the info button. As you aim up, and these are just going to be arbitrary numbers, well, let's say every, every uh, 10 degrees that you aim up is going to be one-tenth of 
or you know, ten percent, or it's not one percent fade added. No, ten percent would be a lot. One percent fade for every ten degrees you aim up. So if I aim up thirty degrees, it's adding three percent fade, right? Which would be almost like an extra fade amount of fade. Um, if I aim down thirty percent, then it's multiplying that by a negative number. It'll be taken off three percent. You know, which is most of the way to turn. Um, so I, I don't think they ever really mess with the turn numbers when calculating things. The turn number just is a, it's a number that, that's going to tell you how touchy essentially that this is going to be because to fly at this, with this ratio and this amount of turn, if you're going to have a touch of your disc, then that lower amount of turn. Um, so when they multiply this by a percentage, this is getting affected less. So that's interesting, okay? This is also interesting. Berg, four mile an hour, crosswind, my favorite Berg angle. It's not touched. The wind did nothing. So, and I mean, this is, this is every direction, and I've never really freaking thrown a Berg. You guys might already know this, but to me, I thought this was fascinating. I didn't do a headwind. It does it so? Does this little Berg thing? So, what does that mean? Well, it means that the wind effect is affected. That the wind affects your flight by a percentage of a change to your fed. So, this makes so much sense. Um, we'll come back to our stat sheet here. Um, I was always, people always talked about, uh, you know, you don't put windbreak on putters or it's not offered as a putter because putters inherently have the windbreak already. You know, probably that same, um, same expert that told me that turn was changed from turn told me, told me that maybe that's where I heard that from. But, um, I will tell you that I've had chats with Reese, um, you know, asked me, Hey, I'm going to do a custom disc. What do you think about windbreak on putters? You throw windbreak putters. And he pretty much said, I don't notice a difference. Um, but what do we know about windbreak? What well, changes, it, it reduces the amount that the wind affects your putter or affects your disc by 25%. So again, let's throw out some random arbitrary numbers and say that one wind in your face is 1% of uh, a change. To your fade. So if you got a four wind in my face, that's gonna be four percent. You know, throwing into the wind four wind would be like extra turn on your disc, right? Um this extra turn is five percent. Four or it's four percent. Okay, what's four percent of three tenths? It's twelve thousandths, right? So we're talking point three one two. So it's only gonna make it point three one. Um, but what your what, what's windbreak going to do? It's going to take that point, point one two, point oh one two, and it's going to make it point oh oh eight. So so you're going to have point three zero eight, change, you know, affecting your. So it's it it's changing it by four thousandths, um, which is why Reese says he, I don't really notice the difference. I guess me too. I've got two windbreak putters now, so um, I will say, you know, I knew that the wind didn't affect my putter much to begin with when it comes to the left and right. Um, if it's a strong wind, it's bad enough to blow it out of the basket, and I don't think the windbreak necessarily um, affects that, you know, enough to really save that. But what I always hoped is that um, I'm, I'm also assuming, and again, here we go into speculation land. Um, I don't have any evidence to back this one up, though, but um, headwinds also have an effect on lift, as you know. Um, so my my hope with having windbreak putters was always that if I'm throwing into a wind, that it won't lift as much and, and bang me into the band. And now that I've got, you know, some time with the windbreak hope under my belt. In fact, I never really threw a sticky hope. I came from like a keystone to a hope. So I might go back and throw a sticky hope, see if I notice a difference. But so, yeah, I thought all that was fascinating. Back to the uh, Sampo versus 
Sapphire. Okay, so it's got 25% less fade. Windbreak is 25%. So this is why Sampos don't seem to be touched by the wind as much. It's because it's inherently got the windbreak just from a function of its fade. Um, so yeah, I think um, honestly that's that's the big takeaway from all this deep dive into the stats. Um, fade makes a huge fade. Fade is the only thing that gets changed from all these external factors: extra turn, wind, elevation, up, down, nose angle. It just just modifies your fade to make your disc fly, and it's brilliant. Whoever came up with it, um, because I've always thought the flight in this game was awesome. I love that when you throw the nose down, it turns more. And when it's up, it fades more. It's intuitive. It feels like you're, it flies like a disc is supposed to fly. You know, the ground interactions is a different story, but it's a video game. It's fun. So, yeah, let's see what this looks like in practice. I'm going to go to my favorite tunnel hole. The idea, I know there's a lot of new discs that have been coming out, um, like that uh, FD3, right? It's pretty much exactly like a musket, but when you look at the stats, it's got it's got less turn, so it's it's less touchy. It's a slightly less touchy musket. It, it looks on paper like it would be a little more overstable, but it doesn't really come that way. Um, you know, in the game, it's just slightly less touchy. So I just want kind of that information to be a little more at hand so people can make decisions um because honestly i was throwing a musket when i got that fd3 and i it, fd3 immediately went in the bag i don't think there's any reason not to throw an fd3 if you like a roll musket throw the roll fd3 so here's my tunnel shot here's that here's the ganon force over move um all right just more proof that sampo's greatest disc of all time um that's gutted and there's it was never anything but um what's my most all right so next get this sweet new global league sapphire um if i were to try to play actually you saw i put a little baby tiny anhyzer on that because the wind's helping in that direction right i do the same thing with this sapphire see ya right if that had a fair way to travel down it it would have come back um so then what, I gotta go hyzer now, because we're gonna have to hyzer flip something like this. Let's go about a disc's worth. Okay. Mm, a little too stable to get there, but you can see it fades out at the end. All right, gets a lucky kick, but that sucker was going way left. Um, that's kind of touchy. Honestly, that's why I don't want sapphires and muskets in my bag. Because um, I do a lot of nose down, and I hate guessing on hyzer angles. Um, Grace, <laughs> it's just it's play my baby baby Annie with the Grace. It's like it's off the planet. Um, so that's that's what I mean by touchy. And if you think the fairways are touchy, then I mean these drivers are it's a whole other level. So, I remember seeing, I mean, I don't know, it could just be because I was newer, newer back to the game, but there's just a specific, specific person making a big, big deal about the destiny. And holy crap, man, that disc is ridiculous. Okay, Lost Island. Um, I didn't change my bag. All right, so Destiny. Okay, so you'll notice all those pretty close. Let's, uh, let's just use that top chevron like a rifle sight, put it right on that rock. Okay, wobble up, come back down. Okay, destiny. I mean, 
worthless. Hate that disc. I don't know. Captain, also not the biggest fan of the captain. I know a lot of you guys do it. Obviously, you're not you're not throwing low lines with it because it does pretty much the same thing. It's not quite as hard. Winter lines over here. Definitely not as understable. Alright, and we're going down on our little spreadsheet. These all have progressively less and less turn. Alright, so you can throw crazy straight lines with the DD3. And it's considerably less touchy than these, these guys. Okay, so let's look at the other big boys. Um, I'm not even going to bother throwing the Cloud Breaker 2022. It's it's in between these two, but Gold, Zeus, Rive, and I put the Rask in here just as an example of what no turn will do. Um, gold, All right, it has the smallest variance between fade and turn, um, but it has less fade than the other two. But you'll notice it's pretty controllable line. I um, actually really like the gold for that reason. The Zeus has more turn. You'll see that wobble down a little bit, so that's why it turned a little more. But the Zeus, Zeus has more turn than Arrive, um, and this is where it'll show. So the Zeus is touchier than Arrive, um, but fairly similar in flight. And Arrive. Yeesh, wobbled. Again, throwing one shot and getting a comparison, you can see how close they are. Um, but the idea is that, you know, if you if you exaggerate it and I throw straight straight down the hill, then that rive going just right at this bridge, which by the way, that, apparently that ledge has no collision. But Rise going just right at the bridge. Zeus. Alright, there you have it. The Zeus is touchy. That's an extreme example. Most of the time you're gonna throw it. It's not gonna be as big of a deal. But the wind elevation is gonna affect those two discs. It's gonna affect that disc more than the other one. Alright. And then the disc that doesn't have any turn. Ridiculous. Alright, so that's what I mean by touchy. Um, when you throw it down, it'll have more turn. When you throw it up, it'll have more fade. All right, that took that takes us to the whole reason I started this conversation with Adam was that they were he was talking with Reese. Reese got I'm sure a billion amazing skip sample lines, but um, talking about a safe run at Coyote too. And I chimed in and I'm like, you know, hey, these things don't turn. Cut them blind. I'm like, these things don't don't turn. Not to I'm an idiot cut you one. Not running two. Good lord. Uh, coyote one. Okay, so they were talking about they were talking about trying to figure out, you know some kind of something or there where they're going to throw it down there and it's going to be a run at the basket without fear of skipping along. And they were like, you know, well, you can't really have a safe run. And I was like, you know, well, you know, you could just, could just throw it up in the air and, you know, still put a bunch of ante on it, but you'll notice that it doesn't, doesn't fade out crazy left, get a decent run at the basket and it's not going to go out of bounds. Okay, if you tried to do that with the skip sapphire, which I don't, I'm not gonna have any of that stuff in here. But you do that with the skip sapphire, and it's gonna it's gonna fade out way left, right? Um, so that's touchy. Um, that's pretty much what I learned is that the stability doesn't really matter. Um, cause you're not throwing flat lines all the time. So that ratio and how much fade there's going to be and all that 
uh, pretty much means nothing. What you're looking for is is the difference. Um, so hopefully that's helpful to just to understand these numbers better. Um, I don't know what I was going to do. I wanted to show one more. Sorry if you guys are even still watching this, but I don't know a good. I guess I'll just go back and throw it down Northern Breeze. Four. Okay, so our uh, muskets, right? I'll go ahead and throw the knot with a freaking three land. Okay, musket. Alright, so we'll throw it. Okay, it's hitting this tree over here right in the gut. FD3. It's less touchy. Alright, so food for thought. Um, for one, some of these, because I, I just, I'm anticipating. You know, how long is it going to be until we see evaders and FD1s and there's going to be all these discs flooding in and they can't just make them, they're not going to go further or anything like that. They're just going to make them fly differently. There's going to be slight variances in all these things and based on how you prefer to throw. Because I mean, like I know watching Dan throw bandles and, and not everybody throws, throws low lines. So rivers, vandals, touchier discs might be right up your alley. Um, but for me, I'm not doing that. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So it's not going to, those discs aren't going to be useful to me at all. I don't even carry a turn. I don't carry a turn drive. Um, I took the, I took the roll, glide roll drive out put the cloud breaker one in just so that that's that's all that's the least stable i needed this to be for any hole that i play right now at least um so yeah food for thought let me know what you guys think thank you